tracking on satellites because I used to watch lots of movies. I mean, I still watch lots of movies, but now I'm like, haha, that's dumb. Um, I used to think that like satellites were awesome. And then I found a bunch of satellite systems on the internet and I'm like, well, this is crap. They're like modems. I mean, that's it. That's, uh, that's, all, that, that's all I get. You're like, I transmitted a bunch of packets. Meh, that's unfortunate. Um, hilariously, your firewalls and all your awesome border perimeter security doesn't do a lot of good if you take your backups and put them directly on the internet with default credentials. This is like a NAS station or like a Synology disk station. It's basically one of those little boxes that's got an ethernet cable coming out of it that's got a stack of disks in it with a dinky little embedded Linux system that does backups for you, except, you know, somebody put it on the internet directly. Like, this is supposed to live on your land, guys. Car washes. Who here knew that you could tell that into a car wash? Because I didn't. <laughs> Um, also, hilariously, you can, these things, <laughs> I don't know if this was a gag or what, but they have like an alarm system built into them, where if there's a car in there and you think there's like a, like a, oh no, I'm being ordered to drink. Oh, I like that, that's good. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, lots of ice. Woo. Wow, that's good. <laughs> but these things, um, they have an alarm mode where you can, you can flip the ramps up and trap the car inside, and then a little, a little alarm light comes on, a little thing plays. So like, you can send your friend through and be like, ah, oh, watch this, boop, and then watch them rage, try and get out of the car while the foam is spraying and stuff. Yeah, they run Windows CE. Like these things, I guess they come in a giant box, or like some, some company comes and installs it for you if you're like the, the owner of the car wash. But like, they put a little panel on the wall, like in the back room, and you can control the water pressure, and you can turn on the soap, and you can do all this sort of stuff. The panel is what's vulnerable, right? The panel gets an IP address and it's running Windows CE and you can FTP to it and you can get a command like a C prompt. Never thought I'd have a C prompt on a car wash. Um, this was interesting. It's a, a gigantic steam generator like the size of those Lieberts, like this huge like twice, like, like two refrigerators wide and it makes steam. And I thought for a minute, I'm like, why is that interesting? I want, to th I want to think that this is more interesting, but it just makes vapor. Like, why do I care about vapor? Well, they use these things in hospitals and laboratories and things. You really, really want to make everyone in the burn ward really angry, you turn off the, the humidifier. <laughs> oh, boy, you get a bunch of people in the burn ward with dry, crispy skin. Ow. Um, also, uh, their marketing material uh, goes over how you can connect directly to the board. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, these guys have no idea what they're telling me. Like, I'm, oh boy. The marketing material also says that they're in a lot of very prestigious places, including the White House. I'm like, so you connect directly to the board in the White House. I'm writing that one down. That's going, that's going my little notebook. Okay. Um, emergency telco equipment. Uh, things that first responders have to deal with, like this is a VoIP system that you can install in like a local 911 uh, facility, uh, or if you want to like overflow your 911 facility, like you're going to plan something and you're like, well, we're going to need like 200 more people answering 911 for tomorrow because we, we're doing something real fun they're going to love. Um, so you attach these things and it bolts on extra VoIP capacity basically. Well, they look like this and there's no creds and they monitor, they don't monitor calls per se, but you have all the call logs, all that stuff that Prism says that they're catching, right? All the meta of like who called, what number, when and for how long, that's what these things do. Uh, and yeah, they're on the internet with no creds. So anybody that has a web browser can browse to this thing and, and look and read the logs. Um, I'll give you guys a second to read this. This came off of I, I, what I think is a switch, very old switch. Um, anybody want to? yell and point, because I did when I saw this. I actually had to stand up to yell and point. I needed a running start. Support for Netscape 6, Netscape 6 10th of August, 2001. February 1998, fixed initialization flashing problem with Netscape. Script found in www.geocities.com. Oh my god. <laughs> There's code from Geocities running on switching equipment on the internet live right now. Why? Speakers. I didn't think that the people would decide that putting a web server inside of speakers would be a good idea. Yes, you can make them play shit. <laughs> um, these things have like, they're for, I guess they're for stages or lobbies or something. And you can put like, it's kind of like hold music. But yeah, if you want like intermediary, like, oh, this band just got off stage and a new band just got on stage, um, you can make it play things. And yes, it just, 
Unauthenticated, just post an MP3 and you're good to go. Some random speaker somewhere is blaring Trollolo or Rick Astley or something. Um, any place that's big enough to have a cooler labeled specifically for champagne, you think maybe there's some dollars there? These guys have a champagne alarm? Interesting. That's kind of cool. This is another Niagara system. Um, this is the layout of their system. Uh, this is a large hotel in New York. I forget what the name was. I've actually blanked it out so I don't get anybody in trouble. But um, in the bottom left there, you can see the champagne temperature. Originally, I had thought that two of those were sensors that were both temperature sensors, and the whole thing was, holy crap, this, this fridge is, is big enough to have two temperature sensors in different zones. How much champagne can they possibly have? Um, but still, you know, if you have a, a champagne cooler and it's just for champagne, uh, you're really going to make somebody, some procurement person's day bad when you raise that temperature to 150 and all the champagne explodes. Um, but yeah, that's kind of funny. Like, same thing. On the internet, like, you're at a hotel. This is the funny part, too. This is, get, this is where it gets Hollywood, because then you could go to the hotel and sit in the hotel and mess with the hotel while you're in it and watch them run around. And, you know, it depends on how, how, how much of a sociopath you are, right? <laughs> um, science. Who loves science? Who doesn't love science? Get out. Um, uh, CERN, actually. I had, like, 400 and something ridiculous findings at CERN. Like, at some point, I decided that... that uh, I can't do all this by hand, and I had written a bunch of scripts myself, and I had a friend um, uh, help me write a bunch of stuff as well, and I have discovered a lot of, a lot of things in a very short period of time by, by looking for specific um, business organizations. And when I did a search on Shodan for CERN, I found lots and pages and pages of stuff. So we wrote the screenshotting tool, which I'll show you later. But like, CERN had a ridiculous amount of stuff online. Like, this particular screenshot was a functional test monitoring page, and this is like for people that write code that submit jobs to giant work clusters that do things. This is the measurement of how those jobs perform and how the clusters do. Not entirely interesting to anybody that's like contextually disassociated from CERN, but my first guess is like as a security dude, this probably shouldn't be online. Um, neither should LDAP by user geography. <laughs> like. Their LDAP system was connected to the internet and queryable over the, over the internet. But really, your, your whole LDAP system? Anonymous bind. Holy crap. Um, this is a map uh, of a system they have called Alice that reports the compute nodes they have by cluster, by geography, and how busy they are and how many jobs they're running. So like, this scales. Oh, that's something else. Uh, but this is. Uh, there's a better map of this later, but like, generally speaking, I shouldn't be able to go to a website and look at the status of your entire compute cluster. Uh, this is their core network. Um, this is a wiki that they had running, and this is all their core networking equipment. Generally speaking, you probably don't want your core network documentation exposed to the general internet. Um, this is their virtual compute cluster where you can ask for a VM. You want a VM at CERN? <laughs> um, this is a screenshot from the Google Earth application that they built that was just like this, except it's a lot more pretty. It uh, graphs their uh, compute node clusters, who they're connected to, and what, what, where the routes go, how busy the how busy the nodes are, and how uh, how popular they are, or or how uh, how, mu how much power they can consume based on their size. So you can see like transfer rate, we're transferring at 8.6 gig a second across the whole system and it's running 244,000 jobs. So I'm like, this is a pretty big compute cluster that's completely open to me to mess with. Um, I reported it. They have their own ISC cert department. They got their own computer incident response uh, team. And I reported it to them and like nine tenths of all the stuff I reported is now offline. So those guys are awesome. CERN are cool people. Um, I went on to find um, gondolas. This is a French gondola system that's at a, a ski resort. And yes, you can stop it in the middle of the ride, and then you can open the doors, and then you can yell at them over the speaker. Uh, <laughs> I haven't tried that, but I'm inferring it based entirely on having to go and manually translate all this text. But yeah, same sort of deal. And it's got like, like summer mode and winter mode. And right now it's in winter mode. It'd be kind of funny to just switch it to summer, just to see what happens. Like, switch it and then just watch the news and see if anything comes up. Um, gigantic, ridiculous solar arrays that track the sun. The system that they use to calculate the tracking of the sun looks like, oh, it's called Atlas. Uh, looks like that. Um, whoever writes their JavaScript uh, did them a favor because it was so bad that uh, the JavaScript was causing the page to not be able to render properly. It took me like a day just to get it to do this. 
Um, it is so bad you can't hack this just because you can't even read it. Like it's, it's you, great, I found the setup section, but it, it, the, I give up. <laughs> It was cool for a while, and I gave up. Um, I think this is a I think this is a screenshot of the power consumption from those systems, but I could be wrong. This is a uh, I think it's either Greece or Italy. Uh, it's a, it's another uh, solar electric generation plant that's generated 350 kilowatt hours of power, which is not a small amount of power. Here's a heart monitor. Why is our heart monitor connected to the internet? Somebody tell me, please. Anybody here work with HIPAA before? <laughs> HIPAA? Any HIPAA people? Are you, are you hair is on fire yet, like, I shouldn't be able to look at heart monitors over the internet with no creds. Like, you click on the thing and it pops an RDP session and does this. Oh, and, and there, is, there is an authentication box, but I, I just dragged it off the screen. Like, the, the authentication box comes up over this interface. I mean, I don't think that you can, I'm, I'm certain this is read only, because I don't think that you can write to somebody's heart with one of these. But that would be a whole different, like, oh, man. Um, housing, housing control, uh, where you can uh, turn your lights on and off. Uh, housing automation, sorry. Uh, those things are online, same thing, no creds. You can open this guy's garage door, make him really scared. <laughs> um, .gov oopsies, these are the fun ones. Anybody familiar with the 4.9 gigahertz spectrum at all? Um, recently, uh, the department, uh, I think it's, DHS decided we don't want to deal with silly unwa unwashed masses and all of their silly Wi-Fi games. We're going to create our own frequency, but we're going to use all the same exact hardware and technology. We're just going to like jump down a few hundred megahertz uh, instead of 5.1 or 5.0 gigahertz. We're now on 4.9, and nobody can talk to us because we're running 4.9. Uh, they look like this. Basically, they're on buildings and roads and things like that. Uh, here's you can buy them directly from the site. I think they might check your ID to see if you're actually .gov, because technically only .gov people are supposed to have this kind of hardware. But the, pub the site you can buy this from is all public. Um, here's an overview that I won't read it to you, but it basically says Homeland Security is using 4.9 gigahertz for wireless transmissions, right? OK, cool. Well, they're listening on SNMP and uh, <laughs> public. Uh, dash SNMP walk dash v1 dash c public, and you get this. And the little string that I blurted out was the person's name who runs them. And based on that name, you can Google that name and find out what office she works in and what building she's in and her phone number and her email address. So like, their super secret awesome hardware to keep all their super secret stuff super secret is public on the internet and doing information disclosure. Smooth. Um, I never ever thought that I would find lobsters on the internet. This, this was a thing to me. Um, this is a fishery that's using uh, SCADA, very simple SCADA uh, stuff to control the coolers that they use and the vats they use to keep their fish you know, prepared before they sell the fish. And they have a lobster chill room. So I'm in your SCADAs, right? <laughs> but it's chill mode, right? And we can't forget the champagne cooler. <laughs> so like, this is getting absurd. Swimming pools. Anybody thought it would be a good idea to put a swimming pool on the internet? I didn't think that you could put a swimming pool on the internet, but you can. And what the fuck is that? <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? Whoops. Why would you give me access to an acid pump? Me. Why? You can set it to manual, and then you can just dump it into the pool. OK. So <laughs> an acid pump. If you, if you know a friend that's running this, System, tell them to just take it off the internet. Unplug it. Yank that plug. So, like an acid pump, really? <laughs> so, consider the following. You're in your 80s style horror flick scenario with a bunch of hot teenagers in a pool. These are not a bunch of hot teenagers in a pool. <laughs> um, when Jason Voorhees shows up, right? And Jason Voorhees likes his victims alive, but unfortunately, because you've dumped the acid into the pool, they are now all soup, and now he's pissed at you. <laughs> so pissing off Jason Voorhees is something that you, that you probably want to avoid, so please don't dump acid into the pool. Homerex live shot, um, to drastically change direction. The, the system that connects gigantic cameras that the news uses to the van, I think it's to the van, is public on the internet. It looks like this, and you can mess with it, though I have no idea what it does, because no matter what you click and do, you, you get no feedback. 
So maybe somewhere, somewhere, there's a news editor tearing their hair out of their head trying to figure out what the hell's going on, but like, your stuff's online, dude. <laughs> um, Prism View, anybody seen those gigantic LED billboards that are um, on the side of the freeways? Well, this is what the interface looks like. They listen on port 80 with no creds of any kind. Um, this is how you can find one on Street View. This is what they look like. Hey, wait, that's a camera. <laughs> that's what the camera looks like. <laughs> I, I cackle like it's really clever, but no. This runs on, that, uh, that runs on port 80. This runs on port 8088. So like, there's, that's not really a challenge. And again, there's no creds. You just point, point your browser at it and it goes. Um, so that's the ad playing on that slide, uh, or very nearly. I think they may have updated their marketing campaign. But interesting, you can control billboards on the internet. Um, so let's say you find your stuff. You, know, on your, you find your internet adventure uh, full of goodies and you have like 50,000 results. What do you do? How do you parse 50,000 results? What do you do when you have all this stuff? How do you find it? Well, you screenshot it. It's a lot easier to look at screenshots of stuff than it is to look at uh, individual pages and render every single page. I don't want to go to 50,000 pages by hand. That's retarded. Um, so we wrote a thing that screenshots all the things. Some of those screenshots might look familiar. Um, so I had a lot of help. Uh, here's the GitHub link. Uh, my friend Paul basically wrote the majority of it. I basically just provided guidance. Um, but you can download this now, and you can point it at Shodan, and you can do queries, and it will take pictures of the stuff that you find. And you can hyperthread it, or hyperthread it. You can set it to like 20, 50, 100 threads, and you hit go, and you end up with a giant directory full of, full of images. Uh, for some of the other stuff, uh, I basically scripted that with VNC. Uh, if you have default creds, for example, and you have a bunch of places that are running VNC, you can use this tool here and literally just write a for loop in bash to step through a list of IP addresses, connect to the VNC session, take a screenshot, and then disconnect. It's completely read-only. Um, so that's how I got a lot of the other screenshots there, where it was just like grabbing the screenshots from, from um, Tritium Niagara systems. Uh, if you want to be a little bit more devious, you can take the output from your Python scripts or the output from the API and pipe it directly into Metasploit. Uh, in this particular example, this is a screenshot of doing a NetBIOS scan of every NetBIOS computer that I was able to find in China. And uh, hilariously, NetBIOS tells you a lot more about the computer than its owner would probably like you to have, like how many interfaces it has and what their MAC addresses are, and in some cases what the name of the user that's logged into the box is. So don't let NetBIOS touch the internet, because <laughs> people can just look, and it'll tell them when they ask. Um, so the best defense is a good offense, right? Uh, anybody work in an environment where under penalty of death, if you run Nmap on your own equipment, your own infrastructure, they'll take you out to the parking lot and beat you to death with a tire iron? I've worked at a bunch of those places, right? So if you can't scan yourself, but the, but the attackers can scan, can scan you, then obviously the attackers have a better idea of your attack surface than you do. And that puts you in a very bad position. Shodan's already done the scans. So go and scan yourselves with Shodan. Go look yourselves up, right? Do it, it's free. Um, you can spot the outliers. How many times have you found as a, as a risk person or a person that's in, in InfoSec at your company an EC2 instance or a Rackspace instance or something that exists with a bunch of your company's stuff on it that you had no idea was there? Maybe you're a part of a committee or you're part of a department. Is it one minute left? All right, I gotta go quick. But yeah, scan yourselves. <laughs> don't, uh, don't, don't be afraid. <laughs> it's free. Uh, some cool new features. You can search by org, city, country, state, and network address, like NetBlock stuff. Uh, Thank you for letting me rant. Here are some links on how to get a hold of me and how to grab the code. Uh, please chase me down, put beer in me, and I'll talk to you more about this funny stuff. Thank you very much. <laughs>